In this video, we're going to demonstrate the use of Viaborn self-expanding endoprosthesis to treat a large popliteal artery aneurysm, much less patient had bilateral popliteal artery aneurysms. The important thing on the uh, pre-op CT scan is to evaluate uh, the whether there's a proximal or distal landing zone that we can actually utilize. Uh, and then before we actually get in the uh, operating room or the hybrid suite, here we can see catheters in the aneurysm. We're looking at a fairly nice a palpiteal segment right above where the anterior tibial comes off. We've also looked basically at the runoff. Uh, we need to make measurements. You know, a combination of CT scan and angiogram. Uh, here you can see a measure of 8 millimeter in that landing zone, so you have to use a bigger uh, endoprosthesis, and you have to build small to large. You've got to put the distal one in first and work all the way back up to the proximal. Here you can see uh, the distal superficial femoral artery with the silhouette in the background. And when you measure this, at that, in this area, it measured about 13 millimeters. And so clearly we can't seal it there. So the biggest vibe on uh, is 13 millimeters. So we had to kind of move uh, the landing zone to somewhere where there's an expected seal here. It's actually 14 millimeters too big. So essentially what you do is you'll go to the size matrix. You have to choose, the most important thing is the diameter because you need to oversize this uh, in order to be able to get a seal. And then you can figure out from the matrix, you know, what lengths and what combinations you can actually use. Then you start here, you've got to first of all cross the lesion, as you can see here. The first vab on, which um, I believe was um, a, a 10 or 11 we were actually putting in. And you can deploy the first one distally. Then we put in an intermediate uh, to build up the entire length. So here we see vab on being deployed inside the vab on. You need a couple of, at least a couple of centimeters overlap, ideally more than that. And once we've got that deployed, uh, we'll then work up to the proximal area in, in terms of the deployment. So the way this is deployed, actually, is just a string and a handle. Once you get in position, you kind of pull the string, and it will expand on its own. So here you can see, and you can do this nice and sequentially, slowly. There's nothing rushed about this. You actually deploy it, then you're going to remove the deliverance system, and then you're going to kind of check how much length you need in order to get the seal. And based upon that, you're going to choose another vibe on. And so you can kind of build these things up, you know, as you as you need them, oversize and distally, oversize and proximally, and then choosing the length that we're going to actually step these up basically as we move. So here again, we're not going to seal here because you can see the biggest one in the matrix in terms of diameter is 13 millimeters. And you can see how this artery is going to taper down a little more proximally. And so we're going to have to come around that corner really into the uh, distal superficial femoral artery above the adductor hiatus. You know, we're basically using an overlay in, in the background because some idea for it's going to deploy. Again, you don't want to cheat on the overlap. Here, we know we're going to put another one in, so you, you don't need to try and cheat in the overlap at all because remember, this is an area that's mobile. These can disconnect. And so it's important that you do have uh, adequate uh, overlay. Again, pretty easy to deploy the device, and then we're coming in. In this case, I think it was with the fourth one we're actually going to use to extend it. Um, you know, I think what we do here is inject it. Actually, looks like it's sealed, uh, but really not very happy with that. So we go, we go in ahead and actually use the balloon. But the decision was largely uh, made that we're going to extend this. So probably could have waited to the end to do the to the, do the ballooning. You have to balloon the entire length of these vibons. And now to make sure there's not any folds in them. So again, we're going to extend this. Balloon does as I said, first of all. And you're going to do this on the full length. Could have used a longer balloon as the other thing. It saved you a little bit of time in doing this. And position. You don't want to extend too far outside of the vibe on. The balloon that. I think we need to show an arteriogram here. I don't know, just go ahead. It's the right thing to do is just extend this up into the smaller area of the artery. And in this case, we're clearly going to use a 13. 
this case I'll play with 13 by uh, 10. And then you got to uh, dilate that overlap area and then all the way up to the proximal end of the device. Yeah, and the balloon being brought back into position, you can see the two radio plate markers on the balloon. Balloon in that overlap zone. Always making sure the balloon is completely deflated for repositioning. And then you do a completion angiogram with the runoff, make sure you've not knocked something down there. That's one of the reasons it's important to know exactly what the runoff is like before you get started. And it's a fairly nice result where it looks like it's been completely excluded here. I just let like you see what it looked like um, uh, six weeks later. Actually, the patient had bilateral. You can see two vibons on both sides. I'm going through these large thrombolas to popliteal artery aneurysms. Uh, we usually put the patient on Plavix. Don't usually fully anticoagulate them. Um, you're supposed to have, you know, more than one single vessel runoff to be able to, to use this. But thank you uh, for watching this.